Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Red Gaming Tentacle video, we're going to be tackling some rumours concerning Polaris. No, I didn't make a mistake there. Yes, Polaris. Now, these rumours tell us that AMD are planning a revision of Polaris, which is going to offer massive performance improvements per watt. Now, a few folks have asked me to cover this, um, and I wasn't originally going to do it, but so many people messaged me, including my personal Facebook, I decided why the hell not. So, just to get everyone onto the same page, although I'm pretty sure most of you are already there, currently AMD have the Polaris 10 and Polaris 11. This spans from the RX, RX 460 all the way to the 480. Which basically means that AMD can compete with up to, let's say, the GTX 1060. But more than that, the higher end, AMD have nothing to really counter it. But that's not all. AMD are also, of course, going to be tackling the mobile market, the you know the laptops and other stuff, the other uh, semi-custom designs, which of course is a lucrative, but b is even more power sensitive than desktops. So that's where this revision comes in. The rumors say that we're going to be seeing the E9 550 and the E9 260, which are going to feature Polaris 10 and Polaris 11 with updated Polaris architectures. Um, now, the actual architecture itself is, from what I can tell, the same. So, in other words, there's no changes, for example, the number of compute units, the num number of, let's say, ROPs or anything like that. But it's more the manufacturing process of the architecture that's been slightly tweaked. The best way of putting it is that it's using a refined 14NM manufacturing process, which sports uh, improvements to the metal masks. Now, this, combined with refined binning, in other words, they're going to pick the very best performing chips which are going to be able to reach a certain clock speed without sucking up loads of energy. And AMD are hoping to be able to put out the Polaris 10 version which is going to be using just less than 95 watts compared to 150 of the current desktop. And Polaris 10, uh, sorry, Polaris 11 is going to go from 75 watts down to just 50 plus also see some clock speed boosts. So, there are some questions which immediately are raised. First of all, are these rumours accurate? Well, my major concern is that WCCF Tech, who are the ones who are reporting this, do not cite any sources at all. They've not said it's from a source within uh, AMD. They've not said that it's... And most of these rumours do usually originate from China, for example, from shipping manifests or something like that. And they've not said that, so I'm a bit concerned about that. The other thing that concern, uh, so the other thing we need to tackle is what is actually going to be happening if they do make their way to the desktop. Right now, we know of Polaris exists. Vega is going to come out now. Vega 10 and Vega 11 are two very different GPUs. I have talked about this before, but the too long didn't read is that Vega 11 is going to act from what we can tell as the the stopgap between Polaris and the high-end Vegas. So it's going to still feature high bandwidth memory too, at least that's what one rumor is, but it's going to be lower amounts. Uh, I'm going to assume not all, not all Vega 11s are going to have HBM2, but I'm not 100% on that. Whereas Vega 10 is going to offer full high bandwidth memory too, 16 gigabytes, massive amounts of memory bandwidth and so on and so on. So, there is some questions on what's going to happen with the current Polaris. So, Vega is basically an improved version of the Polaris architecture. AMD have taken it, they've tweaked it, made revisions on, of course, the power consumption. They've made revisions or as I changes to um, just the overall graphics pipeline from what the rooms have. And we're going to be looking at major performance improvements over Polaris, but that's a bit of a, a a bit of a stumbling block because then you're going to say, well, okay, does Vega 11 run from the very low end card, the equivalent of the RX 460, all the way up to the equivalent of the 480? Are we going to see Polaris rebranded to let's say the 560, 570? the 580 and so on or are AMD simply just going to release these primarily and only solely for embedded solutions that would be let's say the equivalent of the 
E995 E9, E9550 would be the equivalent of like the RX 470 or 480 or whatever it ends up being and so on and so on well it's a bit of a mystery to be honest and my major concern is that if AMD are going to be releasing a new architecture which is based on Vega it might make sense for them just simply to scrap the idea of a slightly updated Polaris for the desktop but then it depends because this is speed binning. So if they are using speed binning, which basically means you, they're cherry picking the parts from what these rumors tell us, that means that they essentially would not be able to use certain chips because those chips would not be able to run at that clock speed at that TDP. So for example, just example, if the clock speed is 1300 megahertz at let's say 100 watts, just to use nice round figures, but that's for cherry pick samples. Well, what are they going to do if, and I don't know what their yields are, but let's just for the sake of this video say that 50% of the chips can hit that. What are they going to do with the other 50%? Throw them in the scrap heap? That doesn't make sense. So it's possible we're either going to get the RX 485, which presumably would either have higher clock speeds or lower, I don't know, energy consumption but I don't really think that would sell for the desktop so it's possible that this is either going to be a new revision of the RX um, 400 series for the desktop which will feature higher clocks or this is just going to be a solely for uh, embedded solutions and that is assuming these rumors are accurate which I'm not 100% on but anyway that's my thoughts on this and I know it's a bit of a convoluted video and it's because we're dealing with so many different product lineups. But hopefully that made sense. If not, there is an article which is linked in the video description. Um, because when you're dealing with so many different acronyms, so many different bloody lines and products, it's kind of hard to keep track when you're saying it verbally. So you could check it out if you want. It's a pretty short article, but as I said, it's linked in the video description. With that all said, take care of yourselves. Bye for now.